We're with Clint Cocker today, one of the owners of Capstone Rail in Indianapolis, and he's going to show us uh, how to they fabricate a L-shaped deck for a project they have coming up. So Clint, take us through if you All want. All right, here we go. First things first, we go out to the project and we actually get field measurements. We write them down, bring them back here. We take a look at our shop drawing then, make sure that they line up with what, what we've measured in the field. If everything is good, this is exactly how we're going to fabricate this panel. <clears throat> the nice part about the shop drawings is they literally lay out exactly how you have to build this. It tells you exact dimensions from your corner post to your next mid post, from that mid post to the next, so on and so forth. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our actual field measurement, which may differ by a couple of inches, at most. Typically we're within a, an inch or so of the actual shop drawings and our field dimensions. So right here, we're gonna start on unit 1302. So we go to unit 1302. In the field, we measured it at 15 foot nine and a quarter. See here on the shop drawings, it's showing us 191 minus 2, 189. So 15 foot 9. So the shop drawing showed us at 189 inches, 189 and three quarters inches. We're at 189 and a quarter inch. So we're within a half inch of what the shop drawings show. On this particular measurement, if we measure 15 foot nine and a quarter, oops, popped off the end down there. You wanna hold me on there, Keith? So 15 foot nine and a quarter puts us literally a half inch past this spindle. So in order to even up the spacing on both ends, what we're going to do is we're going to add an inch and three quarter here, which is going to take us to, to 191 inches, five foot 11. And then we'll go back down here and we'll take off an inch and three quarter. And we'll do that on the top and the bottom. That makes sure that we have even spacing with our spindles. And then what I do from there is I take a look at the shop drawing. And as the shop drawing lays us out, it's saying from the middle of our corner post to the middle of our, our next mid post, we're gonna be at 34 and 15 16, so 35 inches. So if you take the middle of your corner post, which would be about right here. We're one inch past our measurement. And you go to 34 and 15 sixteenths. That puts us right here on this spindle. Then from that spindle, we're going 40 and a half. So I just hook onto that spindle. 40 and a half is this spindle. Same thing, 40 and a half. Same thing, 40 and a half. And then I always check this last dimension just to make sure that we're at that 34 and 15 sixteenths. And that's right where we're at. So then we've cut a block, it's a, just a jig. And what we do is we line that up on, on the opposite, or the, the adjacent spindle. And this, this measurement, I don't even know what we cut these at, but. call it three and an eighth. What that does is when we mark on this side and then we take it to this one as well, and mark on this side, that gives us about a two inch space for our post to fit right in there where that spindle is currently at. That's obviously assuming we're using two inch posts. Yeah, yeah, which typically, I, I've never had it where we use anything other than a two inch mid post. 
hopefully you can see that's that's roughly two inches. All right. Then we'll mark all these. And we take it over to the miter saw. Just put it down there. that pops out. So we'll go ahead and finish cutting all these. Short piece you'll use for that part of the return on it, yep. correct? Yep. All, right, all the scrap here. Okay. So now that same block that we were using to mark where we cut, we have another one over here that we use. These are your mid-post connectors, and all you do is set that block up so that to that you mark for your cut, and that's where you know to put your mid-post connectors. Can you give me a length on that uh, block, Clint? Yeah, I think it was three and an eighth. You got a tape. So just a tick past three, maybe three and a sixteenth roughly. So it's the same block you use for the bottom and the top. Yep. These are probably wearing out because you've had them a while.
bracket. That's it. Numero. I noticed, Clint, on the cups that go on the ends of these, you already pre-marked them for the units. Yes. Yeah. Yep. So this helps us identify what unit they go to. Um, we won't put anything on the long run. What we'll do is we'll just put a piece of tape and then we'll mark the bottom of the post. Um, because we, it's easier to stack on the trailer if you don't have post on the long runs and you put all the post on the short runs. All right. Fantastic. Thank you. Yep.